23.590, near box, and they will take over first place. 407. Jennifer Miller Field was born into what many consider to be a society family. The great-great-granddaughter of department store magnate Marshall Field, she lived a privileged life, yet enjoyed a childhood not unlike each of our own, surrounded by family and friends. Soon after her birth, her parents divorced, and Jen was raised almost entirely by her single mom, Joanne Field. But even then, a special bond was forged between Jennifer and her grandmother, a real firebrand whom Jen just idolized. The daughter of the governor of New Hampshire and married to the deputy director of the CIA, it's no wonder that life was never dull when grandma was around. From a young age, horses were the great love of Jen's life, and that love would only grow through the years. By the age of 12, Jennifer was one of the top junior riders in the country, finishing eighth in the Madison Square Garden Equitation Division competition. If there was one word to describe this beautiful teen's life at the time, it would be discipline. So rare for an adolescent, but for Jen, this discipline was almost to the point of obsession. She would attend school from Monday through Wednesday, then travel to competitions from Thursday through Sunday. And even on those school days, there would be hours of intense training. November of 1992 was bitter cold in the Northeast, but for Jennifer, life was spectacular. Now 17, Jen was gaining national recognition for her riding and had just taken third place in the Madison Square Garden competition, which put the Olympics squarely in her sights. She was in her senior year of high school and deeply in love with a boy named Matt, a freshman at the nearby Connecticut College. Matt was everything she ever dreamed of, and he and Jen had that intangible chemistry that just felt so right. For weeks, Jen had been awaiting her mom's trip to New York, since that would leave the whole house at her disposal to share some private time with Matt. It was around 2 p.m. on November 17th when Jen skipped her last class of the day to hurry home and prepare for his arrival. Her black Saab 900 speeding along the winding country road that led from school to home. A warm flush of expectation engulfed her, and she could not have been any happier. It was at that moment that she hit the invisible patch of black ice and the Saab lost all control. Her breathing stopped the instant her head smashed through the rear window and neither the police nor the fire crew, once they finally arrived, were able to pry apart the wreckage to free her from the vehicle. That was the day she died.